Good afternoon, you wee bastards, and welcome back to War Thunder with Koala. And today it's time for a good old dev blog video on the new Russian attack helicopters, the KA-50 Black Shark and MI-28 Havoc, coming to the game in update 1.93. Now, I know what you're all going to be saying. Where's my H-64 Apache? Gaijin, Apache, when? Well, the American players at least. And the British. And probably the Japanese too. Now, with these helicopters being added, I can only assume the Apache will come next patch, if not this one. That all depends on when Gaijin is able to model it and have that model ready to implement. Hell, by the time this video goes up, the Apache could have been released, you never know. People have said that in the Cube video showcase for the KE-50, the helicopter it shoots down does look like an Apache, so that's something to keep in mind. I personally think it looks more like Bell's competing prototype with the Apache, the YAH-63, which I will put an image up on screen of. That would make a good option for an American Rank 6 Premium, unless Gaijin wants to go the route of an AH-1J Sea Cobra or MH-60L DAP, the multi-mission Blackhawk or the Battlehawk, something I've suggested in past videos. I don't think it looks like an AH-56 Cheyenne, God, just saying the number 56 is a meme on this channel, and it's definitely not the RIH-66 Comanche. It could be the A129 Mangusta, I suppose, but I don't quite think it looks like it. Honestly, it could be the MI-28 for all I know. Either way, America still doesn't have anything that's been announced for this patch. Something must be coming soon, either today or tomorrow, I expect. Let's wait and see what. So the first of the two I want to talk about is the Kamov KA-50 Black Shark, which is going to be a Rank 6 premium helicopter for Russia, Yes, that's right, a premium. This was the first true attack helicopter designed by the Soviet Union after observing the doctrines of American helicopters in conflicts like Vietnam, which proved just how effective a dedicated, purpose-built attack helicopter platform could be. The Mi-24 Heinz and other helicopters in the Soviet infantry were hybrid utility transports and gunships. Basically, they were designed to be fast in a straight line, well protected, and beefy enough to carry as much as possible, which translated well to a weaponized helicopter. American attack helicopters like the AH-1 Cobra, however, were far more specialized for the role of ground attack, and so in the late 1970s, the Kamov Design Bureau came up with the V-80, which would later be designated KA-50 in the early 80s, when the first prototype was completed. The design relied on combat systems advanced enough that a single crew member could realistically perform the operations of piloting and navigation, as well as target detection and combat. This made the helicopter very expensive compared to, for example, the Hind, but it was doable for the Soviet Union in the 1980s. However, during the time frame of the new aircraft being tested, three guesses what happened to delay it, the Soviet Union collapsed. Military funding was stretched thin, and so the KA-50 did not actually enter service until the mid-1990s, after several additional upgrades came to the platform. It was during this time period that the helicopter, still in prototype form, was painted black and starred in the Russian film Black Shark, which is where it gets its name from. In reference to this, buyers of the KA-50 pre-order bundle pack, which cost 50 US dollars, will receive the unique Black Shark title and accompanying decal, as well as the Black Shark camouflage associated with it. As always, the pre-order comes with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium account time, which can be accessed right up until patch day, and can also be bought in a bundle with the T-55 AM1 for 77 US dollars, a 30% markdown. I honestly don't mind this being the premium, and let me explain. Top-end matchmaking premiums, I know Gaijin likes to pretend, oh it's not top tier, even though the newly proposed battle rating changes, until then the Tiger HAP literally sat at the battle rating ceiling. No, totally not top tier, we never do top tier premiums. So to avoid confusion, I'm going to say top end matchmaking premiums, and what I mean by this is vehicles that are close enough to the battle rating ceiling that they will see it the vast majority of their matches. Examples of this are the F-40 Sabre, within 1.0 battle rating of the top end, and even when 10.3 comes along, it and the Shenyang F-5 will only be 1.0 BR away at 9.3. There's also an argument to be made for the premium destroyers in naval, the XM-1 and all the 9.0 premium jets are debatable because they are at least a full BR away, and once the new update to battle ratings introducing 10.3 arrives, they'll no longer be able to see top end matchmaking. But every single premium helicopter does, and in my opinion, that is bad. Top-end matchmaking premiums for tanks and aircraft are a negative thing because they devalue the effort required to grind through the tech tree to top tier and allow brand new, inexperienced players to access the highest level of gameplay, with the most difficult skill requirement, at least in theory. 
However, with how broad this game is, they kind of have to exist, and I'll tell you why. This game has progressed a long way from what it used to be about. I remember when the T-10M was the toughest tank in the game, and it didn't even have a stabiliser modelled. Modern main battle tanks, tier 6 supersonic jets, and helicopters, they all seemed impossible. We didn't even have the mechanics of smoke, let alone APFSDA shells. I don't even know if we had heat FS shells at that point. That means that the gameplay at top tier, back then 8.3 for tanks, really was just an extension of the game at lower tiers, 5.7 for example. A rank 4 premium could effectively grind everything in the game because there were only 5 ranks and the grind was a lot shorter, there were only about a fifth of the vehicles that there are in game now. These days, not only is the grind far far longer, consisting of more ranks which require a higher rank premium to efficiently grind, but the gameplay at top tier is fundamentally completely different to that of lower tiers and appealing to a completely different audience, players who just want modern warfare. In my Everything Wrong with 1.91 video, I mentioned how new players could expect a 6 month plus grind to top tier through dozens of World War II era vehicles, despite how the game now markets itself heavily as a modern warfare game. That means that if there were no premiums that encapsulate that modern style we have at top tier, the game could not attract the player base interested in that, because they'd see how the game, at least for the first few months to even years that you play it, isn't about the thing that they came for. That effectively makes the game's advertising a form of clickbait, you could say. This issue is why top-end matchmaking premiums were added, so that a new player who only came for a modern warfare game can actually get one. There are a lot of people who think they're so smart for suggesting that there should be a rule whereby you should require having a rank 3 vehicle in order to purchase a rank 4 premium, or a rank 5 vehicle in order to purchase a rank 6 premium, etc. And no, this isn't a good idea to implement, because it eradicates most of the reason they were added in the first place. That would force new players to grind through older eras of vehicles, and many of them may not want to do that, they may only be in this game for the modern technology because that's what they find fun over World War II tanks. So if you're not offering that to them for another 6 months to 2 years before they grind all the way to it, through effectively a fundamentally different game which they do not find fun and never wanted to play, then they're not going to play War Thunder at all. We need those players, we need that player base, it's already stretched thin as it is amongst all the game modes and all the tiers we have. So we need to offer those premiums so that new players enticed to enter the game for modern stuff can actually play that modern stuff if they want to, if that's what they came for. There are of course the arguments that modern tanks and aircraft should be a completely separate game, which I understand, or that War Thunder could contain it, but allow players to begin the grind from a certain point, so that new players wouldn't have so much of a grind ahead of them, and could start with tanks like the M60 or Leopard. Main battle tanks. There are plenty of issues with these solutions as well, the last thing we want to do is split the player base even further, but having laid out the necessary evil that is top end premiums, let's get back to helicopters. Should you be able to buy yourself a premium helicopter? Yes. Should you be able to buy one if you do not already have access to the helicopter tree regardless, meaning that you either have already purchased a top end premium tank, or you have a top end tank in the tech tree? No. In my opinion, no. Also, in my opinion, I don't think aircraft should give you a window into the helicopter tree because they're not usable in air battles, they're for use in either grind battles or their own game mode. Which, let's be honest, nobody's coming to War Thunder only to play helicopters. If, for example, they were fans of Apache Air Assault, in the same way that a DCS, IL-2 or World of Warplanes fan might come to War Thunder just for air battles. I think players should need to already have access to the helicopter tree in order to buy a helicopter, unless of course they buy the helicopter in a bundle with one of the top end premium tanks, because then they would be getting access to the helicopter tree anyway, and having the bundle is not only an efficient way of shopping, but with the 30% discount it's cost effective as well, and that is a very good thing, reducing the cost requirement of the game, lowering the height of that paywall. If the helicopter game mode were reworked such that it can be the part of the game that some players are specifically coming for, and how that might happen is a subject for another video, but then helicopter premiums could be purchasable for brand new players, that would be justifiable, but you shouldn't then be able to take them into tank battles without having a tank of the tier. This is why I suggest locking the tiers to prevent fail squatting, bringing very low tanks or aircraft into high tier. Yes, I know it makes for a fun meme and 
Thunder Show seems to love it, which unfortunately just encourages players to do it more. But guys, do that in custom battles. Go and waste your own time. Don't bring a squadron of three Heinkel 112s into my top tier jet team where myself and the rest of the team are trying to play a proper battle. What I propose is that there would be a maximum limit, at least in RB, for both lineups in ground forces and squadrons across both game modes of two tiers. So a tier 7 lineup could not contain vehicles lower than tier 5. You just wouldn't be able to select them in. And for aircraft, a one tier spread. So a tier 4 air RB squadron could not bring in tier 2 aircraft. Just tier 3s and tier 4s. Or tier 4s and 5s for instance. This also means that even if a player does have a premium helicopter, they can only use it in helicopter battles until they own at least a rank 4 tank, or rank 3 even, given that we have premiums like the Mi-24D existing in rank 5, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Either way, that's only applicable if the helicopter EC is reworked heavily, because that game mode is a complete mess right now, and I think a higher priority is naval forces. I mean, tanks and aircraft are getting decompression, at least the beginnings of it, but naval forces is still stuck waiting on a 6.0 battle rating. So I think improving naval forces, fleshing out the tech trees, increasing the player base is a higher priority than helicopters. And for now, you shouldn't be able to purchase a premium helicopter without having prior access to the helicopter tree or buying the bundles. Thing is, that's only half a problem. Helicopter premiums is one thing, and I do feel like helicopters should also get a battle rating of 10.3 with aircraft and tanks, I don't see why we have such a thing as a rank 5 helicopter. I mean, they're all a high enough battle rating to be rank 6 anyway, according to tanks, which start rank 6 at 8.0, 8.3. So why is a 9.0 helicopter considered a rank 5, especially when a 9.0 tank, the object 685, is rank 7? It makes little sense, and even when helicopters like the Mi4 Hound do get down tier to 8.3, that's still a rank 6 battle rating in ground forces, which is what you're going to be using those helicopters with. With helicopter decompression, I also think some of the premiums should be going down. The Huey Hog, the Mi-24D, the BL-105, CB-2. These machines are not as good as their tech tree counterparts. I mean, at 9.7 of the US tree, you have the AH-1F Cobra. So once you have that, the Huey Hog at the same battle rating is useless. The Russians get the Mi-24V and P, which have access to four R60Ms, unlike the Mi-24D. Basically, I think all three of these premiums could be down tiered to 9.3, while the French Alouette 3 premium could be 9.0. That means that you would still have a full 1.0 worth of helicopters above the capability of those premiums to grind for. And this is why I wholeheartedly disagree with things like the Tiger HAP being added, because it invalidates the entire French helicopter tech tree. Why would I bother? What purpose is served by my suffering through the H-34, the Alouettes, the Gazelles, and the stock grind for the Tiger HAD? Why should I bother when I can just buy my way through it and make the entire tree, that entire part of the game, completely redundant? The same is going to be true for the Russians now, because even with the Mi-28 being added, why would I bother going through the Mi-4, even when it does get down-tiered, the Mi-24s and the Mi-35M to get to the Mi-28, with everything I need from an attack helicopter I already have if I just buy my way through? We shouldn't have this. We don't even need it. A rank 6 premium helicopter like the Mi-24D, and yes, I know it's rank 5 now, that's why I suggested deleting rank 5 from the helicopter tree and just making it 6 and 7, rank 6 for sub 10.0s, and rank 7 for 10.0s, and I think we should have a 10.3 too. So a rank 6 Mi-24D premium, that thing can effectively research every helicopter in the tree, but it doesn't invalidate them. It's like using the IS-6 to grind rank 6 tanks. It's still beneficial to play the vehicles in the tree above that premium when you have unlocked them. The British helicopter tree is a perfect example of this, because until we get the Westland Apache, why would I bother playing any of the tech tree helicopters? The entire tree just becomes a consolidation for those players who can't or won't pay Gaijin for the best tech in the tree. What an amazing way of doing business. <sighs> wow. That all came out. None of that was ever in my script, I just had to get that off my chest. But the thing is, we kind of knew this was coming. At the very least, we knew this was coming when the Tiger HAP was announced as a 10.0 premium rank 6 helicopter in addition to the existing French premium, which I don't believe it ever should have been. These trees are minuscule compared to any other vehicle type, and they wouldn't have to be 
if you just gave each tree one premium and made sure it was not the best helicopter that nation has access to. So the French premium Alouette at 9.3, or 9.0 as I suggested, is perfect. Who even knows what they're going to do with the Japanese tree? I don't. I mean, they'll obviously have to give us another one of the AH-1S uh, sisters just to make a tech tree, along with the OH-1 Ninja. But as far as this update goes, when the Tiger HAP was released the last patch, I think we all knew each nation was going to get an equivalent. Britain got the g links even though it ended up at 9.7. And I think once again, either the YAH-63 AH-1JC Cobra or MH-60L DAP Battlehawk will be America's. As for Russia, this is probably the best option they could have gone with, unless you wanted to go the route of adding another export model of the hind end, which would not bring in as much money. So I don't believe we ever should have gotten any of these, our existing premiums were perfectly fine, but now that we have, well, the K-50 was probably the best fit. See, the thing is, this aircraft doesn't have thermal imaging systems, only later Ka-50 variants and the Ka-52 got that. And that brings us on to point number two, the Ka-52 can be added into the tech tree so that players aren't missing out, and given that it can carry more weapons and has access to that technology, it is a better fit for the top helicopter in the tree. I think the Ka-50 does belong in the tech tree, that way we could get the Ka-50 leading into the Mi-28N, leading to the Ka-52 at the very end of the tree, and America could get something similar. The MH-60 LDAP, the YAH-63, RAH-66 Comanche, they could all go into the tree, they don't need to be made premiums. Germany? I'm not sure. Their helicopter tree might have to just be smaller because the new German hind really serves no purpose in the tree. Maybe the Eurocopter Panther? France should have gotten the Tiger HAP preceding the HAD in their tree after the Gazelles, and Britain's tree is just going to remain small, and unfortunately there's not much we can do about that. Even if we get the Wessex, the Gazelle, and the Apache, that would still make it a small tree. Unless we give Britain the Tiger ARH, the Australian modification of the Eurocopter Tiger, which is very similar to the French one. Japan? Italy? China? I'm not sure. They may just have smaller trees, which is okay, but where we can expand a very small tree, I don't think it is reasonable to create these premiums and the trend of these premiums. Britain's g links shouldn't have Hellfires or Stingers, and it could still be 9.7 given that the BO-105 sit there or 9.3, like I suggested before, they all go down to. The Tiger HAP should have been in the tech tree, and so should the Ka-50. But at least this is a helicopter of which there does exist a superior counterpart, the Ka-52, which can come later, so that players aren't missing out on anything unique to this helicopter. As for what is unique about this helicopter, well, for a single-seater, it's huge. However, it should still retain decent maneuverability, speed, and armor, a powerful combination to bring to the table. The pilot should be protected by up to 20mm rounds, and the design of the transmission, not having a tail rotor to link to, will make it far more difficult to damage, meaning that even when being hit, the helicopter should have good survivability. Its tailless design is offset, of course, by that signature contra-rotating, well, rotor, a characteristic common to camo helicopters. Gee, try saying that five times fast. This makes it very capable of performing circular strafing maneuvers, whereby the helicopter will circle its target, either spiraling in towards it or maintaining distance, all while keeping its nose pointed at its prey. The Ka-50's top speed is just over 300 kph, not fantastic, but it does have the capability to carry a pretty hefty armament. 12 Vicar air-to-ground missiles, which are tandem warheads with 1000mm of penetration even after ERA, and a rather ridiculous range of 10 kilometers, coupled with the fastest velocity of any AGM in the game. I don't, however, see us as being able to use that range even with that high velocity, because by the time your missile flies even 6 kilometers, your target will have moved a decent distance and may be behind solid cover. That range is most useful IRL for engaging either stationary positions or tanks moving in convoys over long roads or long fields in, for example, Afghanistan, where there's not going to be so many obstructions, just a flat plane. In War Thunder's maps, engaging from that far away is really quite unreliable, especially if you don't even have thermal imaging systems to clearly illuminate targets for you. Alongside the Vickers, you also have a couple of completely irrelevant weapon types, like bombs or rockets. Well, I suppose rockets are useful enough for taking out bases and EC, but I don't really think that's what you'll be doing in a helicopter like this. 
because the KU-50 is capable of carrying four of the Igla air-to-air missiles, which are the ones recently added on the MI-35M, alongside flares and infrared suppression systems, and of course, a 30mm cannon, the same as can be found on the BMP-2 IFV on the ground. This cannon is mounted on the left side of the cockpit as you look at it, or to your right when sitting in it, and only has a limited traversing rate, although it is better than the MI-24P of course, which has none. Oh, that's not enough DACA for you? Okay, no, I get it. How's eight, that's right, eight 23mm cannons sound? Four gun pods, each housing twin 23mm GSH cannons, identical to those found on the earlier MI-24V and P, and that's a burst mass, not even counting the 30mm, of over 31 kilograms per second. That's impressive enough for the big beefy Heinz, which I didn't actually realise they could carry eight, I thought it was just four, and to be honest that kind of makes this less impressive, but for a single seat attack helicopter, that's still an insane amount of firepower. So a powerful new top tier vehicle to support your T-80U, seeing as without thermals, the T-80B and such aren't nearly so useful anymore. A unique design and a signature Russian helicopter. Just a shame Gaijin decided to make it a premium, though it still is nice to get. Honestly, there's not so much to say about the new Russian top tier helicopter, and yes, I do mean Russian, neither of these were ever in service with the Soviet Union, they both entered service with the Russian Federation forces. Coming to bring Russia up to rank 7 for helicopters is the Mi-28N. Like the Ka-50, this was designed to be a purely attack helicopter, rather than the hybrid role Mi-24, although this was, I guess, a less radical new design when compared to the Ka-50. You can definitely see with this helicopter how it came from behind, and it will feel more similar to pilots, having a higher top speed, but worse manoeuvrability than the Ka-50. The Mi-28, which has the NATO reporting name Havoc, is a twin-seat attack helicopter with a decent chunk of armour protecting the crew compartment, although usually with helicopters it's the engine or transmission being damaged that leads to your end. The Havoc has plenty of weapons for both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground, as you'd naturally expect from a top-tier helicopter, with the ability to carry 16 air-to-ground missiles and 4 air-to-air -air missiles, once again Iglas. Pilots can also load a full air-to-air -air armament and take 8 IGLA missiles and 23mm gun pods, which I expect will be the standard loadout for helicopter EC. The Havoc features the same 30mm cannon found on the Ka-50 and the BMP-2, which by the way is not quite the same as the one on the BMP-3, although the Mi-28 features this gun in a fully rotatable turret beneath the nose. Gaijin stated that at Tier 1, the Havoc will have the ability to research Ataka missiles, which makes me think that it won't have guided weaponry stock unfortunately, though I may be wrong. Interestingly enough, it does not appear to be equipped with the Ka-50's Vicar missiles. Now, Wikipedia tells me that the Mi-28N can carry them, but I don't actually know if it can. Of course, it's not exactly wise to trust Wikipedia on these things. Perhaps it can, but just doesn't, I'm not sure, but it does kind of make sense for it not to. Remember that while the Mi-28 became the standard attack helicopter of the Russian armed forces, the Ka-50 was reserved for special forces units in much the same relationship as between the T-72 and the T-80. The Mi-28 only entered service in 2009, after variants of the Ka-50 had already been produced with thermals, so it wasn't a direct upgrade to it. If the Mi-28N doesn't have access to Vickers, then it's basically no improvement over the Ka-50 in ground battles, as the Vickers have much higher penetration, far greater range, and fly faster, they're actually going to be the fastest AGMs in game. The Mi-28N on the other hand has thermal optics for detecting targets, which is especially important in Heli EC, and has up to 8 air-to-air -air missiles rather than the Black Sharks 4, along with 16 air-to-ground missiles as opposed to 12 on the K-50. So two basically balanced, dedicated attack helicopters for Russia's top tier, although interestingly enough, the Russians did manage to squeeze space for up to three additional troops in the Havoc. Honestly, considering that we were always going to get a top tier Russian premium helicopter, the Kf-50 is probably the best fit, but I don't think we should have gotten any Rank 6 premium helicopters anyway, for the reasons I explained in this video. I did of course highlight what I think should be America's equivalent, because of course we're going to get one, probably this patch, I just wish we weren't. I do look forward to eventually getting the K-52 Alligator in the tech tree, equipped with far more and more advanced weaponry, and this will actually make it worthwhile to grind out the Russian helicopter tree, even if you have the K-50. But I highly doubt that will happen this patch. 
Anyway lads, that's going to be it from me for today. Much longer video than I expected to make today, but I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon, join the 360 squad, and let me know your thoughts on these helicopters and this video in the comments section below. Do you agree with me about top tier premium helicopters? Sorry, top end matchmaking premium helicopters. 10.0, totally not top tier. Of course, if you have a different opinion, let me know, and let me know why in the comments. Come follow me on Twitter and Twitch, join the Discord and check out Patreon or hit the join button here on YouTube if you wish to support the channel further. Thank you lads all for watching, have a lovely good day and always remember keep your bagpipes in one hand, whiskey in the other, keep your kilt on and I'll catch you next time. I say we thank you to these lads for supporting me on Patreon. Captain Fubar, DA261, Geesley Gadarsen and Dark Recon. You lads are bro, if you wish to join them come check out the link in the description below. 